why my drive was making funny noises. That's wild. Came right out the drive. That's wild. Fix that when I get in. Cooking. YouTube land it is exactly 514 check it out all right I'm on the quest I see the Sun kind of peeking over and there's a massive like thunderhead cloud out in the distance and I hope that doesn't hit me going to a new spot today going to a new spot secret spot of course y'all probably all know once you see the skyline but I'm headed there it's gonna happen it's gonna happen Got a feeling. Rob's got a feeling. I got a feeling. We got feelings that there's a tarp and caught or hung or at least we see one. So stay tuned. The last tarp I caught, it was raining before I got out there. So it might be a sign. Could be a sign. I'm, I'm taking it as a sign. You know, you, you know that feeling when you're in a hurry to get to your favorite tarpon spot? And there's a dude in front of you going 35. Actually, he's going like 40. He's killing me. He's killing me. Been doing this for like the last 10 minutes, and the sun's coming up while we're talking. My coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Just gotta hurry up. Check it out, they put an ice machine right by my fishing spots. That's clutch. They tore down the bar and put an ice machine. It's one of those $1.50 ones too. And I beat Rob here. Beat Rob here. I found him. The man, the myth, the legend. Right there. Just finished that huge drag up here. Look at the water though. Oh yeah. Some bait, I got me some bait. Never fear. I was worried there for a second. Yeah, starving candy right there. Be careful, these bad boys will get you. Got them in the live well. <laughs> the Hobie live well right there, folks. And they're gone, just like that. I think I snatch hooked something. Oh, no, I snatch hooked a little lizard fish right through the gills. Crap, he's dead. Shit, 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 shit. Ouch. Ah! Oof. That wasn't smart. Look at my damn gloves. Well, we need gloves. Now he's going to tangle my sabiki all up. All right, YouTube, I wanted to do a quick tip since I'm out here and it's quiet and nothing's going on. On a lot of my review videos, I get a lot of guys that are like bashing reels or the video because, sorry, it's the Blue Angels practicing. I get a lot of, I get a lot of comments on a lot of some of the, the review videos, especially my Jigmaster and my Pen 850 videos about dudes talking about this drag and that drag and this drag's got nine pounds and not 10 pounds and this drag's only 15 pounds and you gotta have an Abbott with 20 pounds or a uh, Van Stahl with 900 pounds of drag. I just wanna show you how I do it, okay? You know, you, you always see me with a glove on and one, that's for bait and fish and things that are prickly but it's also for fighting fish with my reel. Because here's what I do, is I usually have this thing set really loose, right? Or looser. And the first thing I do is I grab it like this, 
And instead of tightening down the drag, what I'll do is I'll thumb it right here. I'll put my thumb on the spool just like that. And it allows me to set the hook with my thumb and also allows me to, if when I set the hook and he bursts, I can just, I can just let him go, right? and I don't have to keep adjusting my drag back and forth back and forth and especially when you get them up close to the kayak like right off the, the side here I don't know if you can see with the sun like off the side and he bursts I can just let my thumb off and let him go and then start all over again then the same thing goes for your pin eight, like a pin 850 or even with these reels like these smaller reels or like the 3000 back there is what I can do is if I have a glove on this hand, if I have a glove on this hand, I can cut the spool. And uh, I just touch, I just feather the spool, pull, and then when he bursts, I can let go of the spool. That way I don't have to have a $9 million reel to fight big fish, and you're not going to burn up your drag washers. Um, so, like, when they burst out, you let them go. When they slow down, cup the spool, start pumping, use the kayak drag to, you know, give you a little let up, let extra oomph and, and um, let them pull you around. And you don't have to have your, your drag so tight. Because what will happen is you'll be fighting a fish with a drag really tight. And then you get him up close and he'll burst and he'll fling the rod out of your hands or he'll, you know rock you over or whatever and it's easier just to be able to pick your thumb up so let's see if i can do this in a first person point of view hopefully this turns out okay all right so if i'm i'm using i'll use my 3000 so if i'm using this reel right and i'm fighting the fish and i need some extra oomph i will just like with my glove on like, like this but with this hand, I'll just feather the spool. So like I pull, holding the spool, and then when he runs, I let go. So it's like I cup the spool, let go. Cup the spool, let go. So if I'm pulling him in, I got a lot more oomph on the drag. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the spool. And then when he bursts, I just let him go. And uh, it really helps to give you an extra extra poundage so on this jig master it looks like this so so I so let's say fish is going off right I pick up the spool I tuck it in here I don't know if you can see I tuck it into my shoulder and then I touch the spool like this BAM set the hook and then when he takes off I let go and then when I when I get when I get north south with him like this like let's say it's a big shark and he's out there and you know I physically can't pull on him because it's letting out because the drag's too weak because this has got a really soft drag all I'll do is put my thumb on it pick up and then when he bursts I let go and you got a glove on right here that allows you to not get your thumb burned you don't get any rash and you can just play that game all day long and then when your thumb gets tired you can use this thumb <laughs> Or you can use two thumbs and pick up and then reel and then pick up and then reel and pick up and then reel and that allows you to get really feisty with them. So I hope that makes sense. That way you don't have to have a 20 pound drag system to fight a fish. Just use your cu cup the spool or cup the thumb or put your thumb on the, on the spool and just watch out. Don't let the braid get around your hand. Wear gloves and that's how you fight those really big fish hope that makes sense i don't know if i'll put this in the vlog or i'm gonna put it on an extra an extra video but i wanted to put that out there so everybody else can figure out but it took me a while to figure out fighting big fish just got cut off for the first time of the day another shark's got a lip ring it seems like the sharks always arrive like the same time of day just like nine o'clock cut off nine o'clock cut off tie another one on try again cut off of that shark so I redid my rig put some 80 pound mono about about a foot 80 pound mono to a, a 60 pound mono the circle hook try it again if that get cuts off then you're just gonna have to deal with it because the tarpon will see that wire with the sun up 
when the sun was down I had a little wire leader on there like like maybe four or five inches now that the sun's up I'd take it all off had a couple tarpon blow up beside my bait but didn't didn't hit it so you what let me tell you I just had a big old massive bull shark come up and say hello he was like right there he just said <laughs> must have been the dude that cut me off all ago came up and checked me out he, he he knew he better steal that bait and run he would have known what was up this outback would have gave him a whooping t-total whooping that's why he ran away when he saw me saw the side of the boat he read that that label on the side right there he read that right there he took off he took off he gone he gone see if he comes back i'll let you know ah what happened ah. <laughs> you're over two Rob just hooked up with something big and lost it. You gotta hold on to him to count. <laughs> lost another one. I keep telling him, dude, you're supposed to hook the fish. I'm still on the prowl. Of course, I don't know why they keep hitting his instead of mine, because he's deeper than I am. We've got the shallow part of the reef. This out. So this is why I don't buy fancy swim baits. Look at that. Chunk right out the side of it. Weird story, okay, so there's these thunderheads moving in right here and right here, and they're like a count of like 20 away, and they were pulling this chick around in the parasol. Looked straight like a lightning rod, and they just pulled her in. I was wondering if I was going to get that on camera. She's just fixing to be barbecue. Ooh, look over there. Might cut this fishing trip short. Hey, Rob, what do you think of these thunderheads coming in? Our rod tips hadn't started sizzling yet. Maybe it'll blow by like the last one. Last one just went right out, right here and dissipated. While well, my drive was making funny noises. That's wild. Came right out the drive. That's wild. Fix that when I get in. Shit. Storm coming. Paddle this one in. Cold. It's in the cooler, keeping them cold for next time. Cooking with this. All right. Life expectancy of a Hobie Raj rod, two years. What good thing me and Rob called it when we did. I came in in a hurry. <sighs> almost, almost lost my wheels. The Mirage drive blew to pieces. I gotta figure out where Rob's wanting to go eat. Then I gotta fix my Mirage drive. That was nuts. I was just pedaling in and the axle fell off of it and then the wires. Hey Rob, where do you wanna go eat? Is there a Taco Bell around here? We decided on Mexican. We're going to this Vallarta Mexican restaurant. I don't know if it's Vallarta. We'll find out here in a second.